Space has been my passion since I was six, and today I want to talk to you about this. I want to start with a quote by Stephen Hawking. Mankind's greatest achievements have come about by talking, and its greatest failures by not talking. With the technology at our disposal, the possibilities are unbounded. All we need to do is make sure we keep talking. So even Stephen Hawking thought that the communication is important. But now I have a few questions for you. How many of you think that exploring the cosmos or looking for other life forms in the universe is pointless? Please give up your hands up. Okay, <laughs> you may be thinking it will be a waste of money or that we already have enough problems on the Earth to solve. But doesn't mean that we should stop widening our horizons. Should we stop dreaming? Um, surely we have problems still to be solved on the Earth, but try to think about uh, ancient Greece that for the first time imagined moon space missions and then this crazy idea became reality in the 60s. I think that mankind has always been attracted by exploring uh, the cosmos or uh, finding if there is someone to talk to up there. But I have a question. I have a question. Um, often, greatest achievements first were considered crazy and then they became true. So, why would it be the same with those science fiction movies that uh, we um, have made not many years ago about uh, aliens meeting with human beings? But now, I'll, g um, I'll give you some, uh, some facts. Um, Last year, we discovered that there is uh, water on Mars. We know that, that life is related to water. So that means that there is or there was life on Mars. Or um, even last year, in 2018, we did our latest mission on Mars by rovers and landers, think about InSight, which is the latest one. And um, this was an idea that we only had in uh, science fiction movies, and then it became true. Have I changed your mind yet? If your answer is no, now I'm going to introduce something a bit complicated. By, but don't worry, <laughs> I'll try to make it easier. Are you ready? This is an equation. <laughs> it's called the Drake's equation. It's scary, isn't it? <laughs> It has a lot of parameters, but uh, I don't want you to focus on these because uh, they are difficult uh, on them because they are difficult to calculate. And because of this reason, the result of the equation isn't precise. But if we decide to believe it to Mr. Franz Drake, we know that uh, n is equal to 5. What does it mean? It means that uh, every moment we have five civilizations to communicate with only in our galaxy. So try to think if we extend this to all the galaxies that we have uh, you know, in the universe. It would be an enormous number of extraterrestrial people to talk to. And now we can uh, make a question. Um, why haven't heard anything from them yet? Surely we are trying to get in touch with them, but are we sure that we are doing it in the right way? So I had an intuition. We have to use as the carrier of our message something that is universally present, something that uh, those five civilizations would experience uh, in everyday life, something that uh, they would be able, I hope they would be able to understand, something that can reach every corner of the universe such as gravity. We know that gravity waves are made by um, black holes or neutron stars colliding or exploding. And I had an intuition. If I try to make them with everything that I have on the Earth, I would reach out to those five civilizations and then they can back, uh, get back to us. Um, so, there's, um, uh, they would be equipped 
with the same uh, technologies that the Virgos and the LIGO scientists use to detect the first gravitational wave. They use a spatial detector, which is an, called an, in, which is an interferometer, that has a long arms, two long arms, longer three kilometers, and uh, it, uh, it has two mirrors that reflect two lasers. And when the lasers meet, they will cancel each other. But if there's a vibration that moves the mirrors, the lasers won't meet, and uh, we have the result of the gravitational wave. So, if they can study the, the results of the gravitational wave, they would know that it comes from the Earth, from us. And um, there's only a small, tiny, insignificant problem with this. So, there's a guy, <laughs> his name is Albert, and this is a little theory of general relativity <laughs> that said that uh, only uh, enormous objects like uh, black holes or neutron stars uh, explode, accelerating, exploding or colliding can do these gravitational waves. I don't know if we have stores on the Earth uh, when I can buy black holes and neutron stars as far as I know. <laughs> and um, that's not me now. That's not me now so easily because I won't give up. When I grow up, I want to study these problems and then find a solution. Why shouldn't we see the future in the universe, which is also our home from the beginning? All in all, won't we all live in caves if we not dared to catch the fire like Prometheus? Now, I want to hand like I started, with a, a quote by Stephen Hawking. Remember to look up at the stars and not down at your feet. Be curious. But I've had this little part. And dying. Thank you.